like a party every Saturday night of people just watching uh, how we watch it on the internet now, but we had an internet back then. So it just be me recording like either nice cars, bitches fighting or anything. People talking, telling me about their cars way back before we had Facebook to even upload the shit on. So it'd be groups of people just watching my recordings then off them little bitty tapes. So I always knew something was into it. Cause if I can get a bunch of gang members to sit around nigga for hours and just watch me walking around with a camera, a lot of the motherfuckers is watching and fascinated. They wasn't there. Yeah. So it's something to them. Just like, man, a lot of us on the internet probably wouldn't even step foot to some of that shit, but it looked good to look at on film right. for the good parts of it. Right. Now that's some real ass shit. For those of that know, we they said whenever you move, it's like if you want to be like that, bro, just, just when you lay back, just bring okay. it with you. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Keep it, All keep right. it right yeah, there. Like I said, like this. make cool. yourself at home, bro. Like I said, we we, we yeah. chill here with this. We keep smoke. And I, I heard your point yesterday after we got off the live too. Yeah. About getting high and everything like that. Yeah. We, we totally agree with that, bro. But like yeah. we try to keep it where it's I've like, seen. Yeah, exactly. You want motherfuckers to be comfortable and be themselves or whatever. But I yeah. guess for the people that's kind of uncomfortable, yeah. they'll hide behind the weed. So yeah. the whole interview will be. Staring at rolling the weed, barely peeking up at you, yeah. hitting the weed. Like it happens. I've seen oh, some yeah, people I like. Well, sure. well, it's because like, we've had it where it's like we get too high, where it's like okay, like all right, we know where our levels are. Like all right, we can get high, but it's like all right, we can't get too high. Where it's exactly, like, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like that. I'm about to spark, spark up right now. <laughs> that when shit. I was talking like, to blood, it's when a I was drinking place this too, shit. you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah! Hell <laughs> you want some drinks? What you need? <laughs> no, I'm straight. I got. <laughs> I'm a, are you about the trends? Yeah. You got the trends only? <laughs> yeah. You already know. <laughs> but I wasn't really finna fuck with none while we were talking because that shit slowed you down. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. honestly, bro. Yeah, I, said, I, I used to fuck out. with the syrup when it was like 50 a line. Now I'm not paying the shit. Nigga, I tapped out at uh, 75. And then right before the pandemic hit, man, I just got blessed from the stars. Like, I, <laughs> I got a bunch it. of it, nigga, a bunch of it. I wouldn't even know what niggas was paying for it then because when it got to 75, I was like, God damn, this is just a little bit too much. Yeah. Nigga, I, right before the pandemic, I got a shitload of it, nigga. And when I took it to uh, the soda store, that's when I found out that shit was going for 200, 250, 300, 350. And I just got a bunch. I'm like, what the? Fuck, oh man, man. or oh, whatever. Yeah. So that uh, changed my life. Before all the other shit, SBAs and all this other shit, money started floating around. Just having a bunch of drink at that time. And when I first got it, when my boy told me what niggas was paying, I was like, man, niggas is not gonna buy this. Mm -hmm. And niggas was buying it up like I couldn't keep it. And I was like, damn, that's really what the number is. I just couldn't believe it. When it finally hit a hundred, I was retired. I was out of the game, nigga. I'm done. When tech hit a hundred, it went up to like one twenty-five. One line, yeah. No, I'm one line. line, yeah. Hell yeah. But then you see uh, the value of the dollar drop because during the pandemic, this shit was like the cheapest one. Tris was two hundred during the pandemic. Walk was two fifty. Went up to three hundred, three fifty, all the way to four fifty. Crazy or whatever. The only thing that drove that shit back down, Sauce Walker got on the fucking video and really ranted about niggas charging way too much and little by little, regular street niggas that you'll be like, oh, I want 450. They'd be like, what the fuck? They have that same behavior that he had. And then motherfuckers went down to 300 and 250 and then money disappeared. So. Mm. But, shit, gotta drop but speaking on the drug though, like God, damn. fucking with it too much, would you say it's it, you, you have to learn how to balance it or are you cool drinking it? Oh, hell yeah, because you could just crash out in it and go broke mm -hmm. like some of the homies nigga it's just like a fucking i don't know maybe a fucking uh uh heroin addict that's probably hiding hiding their drug habit right. and then when it gets to a point where you can't even hide what drug you're doing or even a weed head if you hit it from your parents when you first start smoking right, right. then you start smoking so much it, it took over your personality where you look like you high when you're not even high you're a pothead yeah exactly yeah. when you go to that yeah. And then that happens with the juice where you literally can see, like, as homies, say there's four of us as a group and we all, quote, unquote, what, fake rich or real rich or whatever it is. After spending $200 a line and yeah. doing that shit maybe two or three times a day and then doing that shit for, like, a month, mm -hmm. you can see in a group of probably three of us, like, damn, my nigga, one is falling out. Like, now it's starting <laughs> to hit your pockets. You don't yeah, have yeah, enough yeah. to keep hanging. That's what took me out when that, it got to the hundred. Like, my, I still wanted to keep going with my car love and with my group and the money that was going into that nigga. Either I was going to crash out and be an addict and just be broke of it. Right. Or I was going to have to put some discipline in my pockets. But that's what that takes. That's what that shit take is that somebody around that camp saying, hey, man, you finna crash out. You might need to actually, you know, 
fiend off a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Whatever yeah. it might be. Yeah. But I feel like in a circle, which y'all come around, nobody's really abusing it to the power. It's like, bruh, ain't nobody on the couch just like this. You feel me? Yeah. It's so expensive now, it's like it's hard to be that kind of addict. Like during the generation when we first started this shit, you was getting this shit for $10 a line. So you Jesus. would literally see niggas drink their teeth out of their mouth because you can always <laughs> afford $10. Yeah. Even if you can't afford $10, you can afford $10. It was times where weed was only $5 and we didn't have $5, but you can always acquire five dollars or mm -hmm. whatever See, so it wasn't like a financial decision it was just like oh i stopped drinking back when it was like 20 a line because my liver started hurting every time i'm talking about on my dad mama before i would even literally drink it me pouring it in there i would get a pain on my side mm -hmm. and at first i tried to ignore it because i like drinking so much but i was like man hell was it, no was it the the lean or was it the uh, soda too though Cause I the think soda it was got the a, lean. I've always drank soda in my life because nigga yeah. never really liked water. But like once you start enough. drinking lean, then you're consuming a whole lot more soda, of course. Right. But I'm pretty sure it was that because I didn't take soda out of my life. I took juice out of my life. Well, I didn't take juice out of my life. The economics took it out. Man, mm -hmm. when it got to 75, I was just like, man, I cannot be drinking $150 sodas. Mm -hmm. I was drinking the shit when it was $10, $15. <laughs> so these were only $30 mm -hmm. sodas we right. were drinking. Right. And that was still something to brag. Like, right. bitch, you don't know what this is? It's mm -hmm. a $50 soda. Right. I remember mm -hmm. saying that. This is a $100 soda. That would be a photo. Like, <laughs> a photo. A photo. Oh, yep. Yeah, $100 in that motherfucker. Yeah. That, that's something to brag about because this goddamn soda so only costs $3. Now, right now, oh my goodness. Oh, hell yeah. Now you got, man... My nigga right here on my damn, he's drinking forty five hundred dollars soda in front of me. Forty five hundred dollars soda. Hell so yeah, good. that I sip act at twenty a line. That statement came from, uh, bruh. I came across Shout an out, old bro. activist. Man, my nigga AC right here. Shout out Man, Tommy. my nigga, uh, he's a young dude, so that shit wasn't around when he was around. So he's a rich nigga. So <laughs> he didn't mind paying top dollar when it came around, and that's actually came up by accident. He got some for fifteen hundred a line, and I just jokingly said to him, like, "Damn, man, I drank this shit for twenty a line." Mm. And it was like, "Oh, shit, I put that on the t-shirt because, like, <laughs> this generation, you come across that shit now, it's not you possible. ain't paying no cheaper. No, it's than, not fucking uh, possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No way. There's no fucking way. I had a nigga, what? man, my best friend back in the day when it was twenty. 20 and two for 15, man. This nigga told me 25 alignment. I cursed this nigga out. <laughs> went around the corner, nigga found something for a dub and told this nigga, like, you man. are tripping. Over five punk ass dollars. And probably it was a deuce, so it was over $10. Right? <laughs> but that's how plentiful it was back then. Right. You really could just be like, like if I told him now, oh, I want 180, he really could just be like, nah, I'm cool. And he can probably call five other niggas and find 160. Right. You, know? you know, it's the numbers. And that's what all that matters. I ain't but gonna lie to you. we never thought it'd be this high. Never. That's what's a trip to me at the end of the day is that they can keep doing it. I smoke weed heavily at the end of the day. And the <laughs> pandemic, they, tried, take to, that to they tried to make that yeah. shit ante up. You know what I'm saying? Try to make it go up. And, you know it did. Weed was like it, hella high. You man. remember? Bose was like 5,000, 6,000. Bro. <laughs> Bro, I'm trying to tell I'm trying to tell like, what the fuck? Nigga? We last year, if shit was smooth. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. So, like, this shit was, it was weird for me personally with the weed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, I, I, I found a way to make shit shake. But, like, at the end of the day, that shit was a conversation. You feel yeah. me? If you was a real hustler, we all found a way to make shit shake. In the beginning, I was against it. And then halfway through the middle, I was all the way for it. Because mm -hmm. now, instead of being on the side of the consumer, now I'm making money yeah. off of these taxes that these mm -hmm. niggas are paying. So I was with it. Like, man, keep this shit at 4800 But I did, when it first started, looking at, you know, these shops have these menus that you shop off of. And being able to find good weed right before the pandemic, I'm talking about for like 1200 1300 would be cool weed for a motherfucker. You had shit on the list that was 3000 but you didn't have to get that to mm -hmm. be in the streets. And during the pandemic... It had to be that three thousand or that four thousand, mm -hmm. or you just had a fucking waste of a bag because people's taste was so fine. Right, they only wanted exotic weed. You right. know, it's so crazy they, though. They want, they, for real, but this North, like being from NorCal, bro, we always say like all you guys smoke is like cushions and light shit and everything. But y'all have the same taste just like we do. You know, yeah. what I mean, it's, it's like weed is growing to this fact of like like everybody, it's, it can be consumed in, in, a, in a very. I blame the internet. Yeah, nigga. Strictly, I blame the internet. So, being from NorCal, you guys always had it in y'all backyard. Mm -hmm. So you could just take this six-hour drive to LA, and you could tell us for the same thing that everybody in NorCal looked at and said, "Man, this bag is thirteen hundred. Mm -hmm. You could drive down here and be like, "Man, I want mm -hmm. eighteen hundred 
or whatever. Yeah. And us not commonly seeing biscotti or all of these different flavors y'all had, this packaging y'all had, we're like, all right, here's your 1800. Yep. Right. Well, now that you have the internet going on, when you have a nigga go bragging, like, man, I spent 1800 for this. Mm -hmm. You had niggas in the comments like, nigga, that motherfucker cost a thousand. Who the fuck it's beat you? Though, what or you whatever. Mean, it's yeah. just, it's, yeah, but I'm just it. saying, it ain't no secrets no more. Yeah, like, yeah, nigga, you can take that's what I'm thinking. Like y'all from LA, send it to Atlanta and be like, man, I need three thousand. They're backflip for that motherfucker. Well, now that they've came to LA and seen what we're smoking and they really know what it is, Still, you can't send that over there for that ticket like because online. they know. They're like, bro, I talked to niggas in LA. I know that that bag only costs eighteen hundred. Right. Like, I know niggas down there. Before the internet, even though you knew niggas in LA, we're not gonna conversate on the phone the way that we do typing on our internet. Right. Like, I won't even take the time to dial a nigga's number, but if I'm on the internet, now I'm in your business just because you posting a picture. Yeah. So it's going to force me to comment yeah. and tell you the truth about what you're holding. So now, f across the world, the numbers are the changing. numbers. They're changing. And the Bay Area always had a lot of LA had that because a lot of people uh, didn't know the difference that's in the point, Bay in LA. You got niggas from Detroit and Cleveland that think the Bay in LA is 30 minutes apart from each other. So a lot of people, when they first started wanting good weed, nigga, they was coming to LA first. Right. They didn't know it was there. You listen okay. to the rap music. Mm -hmm. Every okay. rapper was rapping about LA weed. And then when Detroit evolved into the music scene, those rappers started saying the Bay, the Bay, because they were mm -hmm. trying to get in more detail. They right. rap a, a harsher level to, so they wanted to let niggas know like it's not LA. It's That's, the Bay where it's at. Yeah. Like, certain rappers, they really rubbed it in. Not rappers from the Bay, just outside of California. How to them were you at this time? Like huh? with the Bay Area culture as well? Uh, man, I had signed in around like 2010 of like going back and forth. So I found out about... The Bay to LA type thing? Were, did yeah, you, did you go before going. that though? Like, no, I didn't go before that. Going. I was signed in as far as y'all culture, nigga, in like 2000. 3, 2004, because yeah. Mac Dre's music was just making it down here. But by the time he blew up down here, like, niggas like, oh, shit, you actually know the name? Because when I first started hearing, who's that? Who's that? It keep being, oh, that's Mac Dre. It's the dude from up there. Or whatever. He died. He got killed. Mm -hmm. Like, right when it yeah. started flooding around here. So if you watched any of y'all older car DVDs, we didn't understand in, in L.A. what town taxing was. How niggas would fuck up, people jump on the car and punish the people. Yeah. We used to think from here, looking at those DVDs, I, that that was I'm just, not familiar with. it would happen with anyone. That. Town taxing, that's when, yeah. uh, so at, you have a decide show, say somebody does something that the crowd, you got these unspoken rules that we all know as mm -hmm. a culture. And you got some people that will come and break these unspoken rules. Right. And some people will break them so harsh that the crowd will turn violent, jump on top of their car, it sense, stomp it, break. It does. It to makes me, sense, it though. didn't make sense in the beginning. Like, you shouldn't be here it. type shit? Like, one yeah, of those that's did why that I type shit. Yeah, you shouldn't have did, did that. Did that, okay. But being from outside of that, I used to look at these DVDs and just see random cars going through this, not seeing the before. It made me not want to go to the Bay, period. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, I don't want to just go there one day and the whole crowd decides, him, he's from LA, That's the guy, and jumps yeah. on top of my car and crashes through my T-tops yeah. because I didn't understand the structure of it right. until I actually got there and seen that if you see something like that, man, it might sound rude, but nigga, the nigga 10 times out of 10, he deserved he it. Deserved he might have not deserved to get all of that, but he deserved <laughs> some type of discipline that had to happen right there, right. or the nigga would do the shit at Again. the very next spot. <laughs> <laughs> at the very next spot. You think it's nigga. okay. You hey, think so it's okay. okay. We didn't have that, we didn't have that in LA or whatever, but through other people having these cultures, you have people breaking these rules, so it starts to come. Not even on no copycat shit. A lot of, some of the stuff be on copycat, but you don't copycat violence or whatever. Some violence is needed. It's so, influence. Uh, I, would one, call it, I would call it influence, right? In yeah. Way. One good one or whatever that uh, I thought, especially uh, seeing how it goes out there, seeing shit happen in L.A., and being like, damn, if I was in the Bay, they would have whooped this nigga's ass for this or whatever. But it's not that structure right. here. Mm -hmm. So this asshole just gets to keep being an asshole. Whatever, whatever. Man, one time we were on Crenshaw and uh, one of the kids, the lowrider community and the donut community is separate, man. These dudes hate each other. Uh, we use their form. The lowriders are older. They have structure. So when we wanted to come out and do our donuts, we needed a crowd of motherfuckers to watch it. That's You don't want to just do it for yourselves. It's boring as fuck. Right. Man. That's like... Uh, I don't know, imagine uh, 
having a million dollars because <laughs> nobody around to appreciate your shoes yeah. or your chain. Yeah, you that's what I'm saying. Sucks. You got you to gotta appreciate yeah. with everybody else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. If I'm not able to make someone feel... You don't want to make people feel less than, but you like the pat on the back. Yeah. So that's if, uh, if everybody got you built. Fuck, you built it. You yeah, that's why you spent it. all this money on this yeah, car. Yeah, exactly. Or whatever, and built it blood, that's sweat, and tears because you want to go out around like, other motherfuckers that did this. And they're going to pat you on the back for that desire, that passion, whatever. Uh... We always use the Lowriders platform to do our donuts. And by the years it grew, it just came down on New Year's Day. They wasn't having it. They walked out there in the middle of the streets. They tried to block us off with their bodies or whatever. Mm -hmm. Some of the drivers didn't give a fuck. One of the dudes throws his kid on his shoulder and mm -hmm. walks to the middle of the streets like, you motherfuckers, you better not hit me. Well, somebody almost hit this nigga with his kid. And Jesus. it got to be a thing between you maybe got like 300 young dudes and maybe like 1,000 older dudes. We're all at the center of it. I'm a, like a representative of LA, so I'm right there in the center. They're trying to pull my nigga out his car mm -hmm. or whatever. We're arguing. The one that's just trying to pull out his car, he's actually good at doing this. He has a nice-ass car. It's on some Forgiatos. Mm -hmm. So you know he's just not some reckless nigga that's going to hit your car because mm -hmm. he don't want to fuck up his. Mm -hmm. But these lowriders that might got 75,000 invested in their car, they can't tell the difference. They just don't want their $75,000 car hit by one of these cars spinning the circles. So that happened. A uh, little bit of argument. There is no such thing as town taxing or whatever. It's just that's the first time where it's like gets to like, man, these groups have to divide. It's going to be a fight, a shoot, something. Mm -hmm. We get to the very next spot. People are standing out in the streets. One of the rookies that's not good at this does the shit, nigga, opens up his door like he's a professional. <laughs> nigga, the car, you know, you're sliding around. The motherfucker yep. catches traction. What's he in? And goes an infinity. <laughs> an infinity. G35. <laughs> yep. Nigga, infinity. he drives right into the crowd and hits a nigga. The, the dude, the crowd is in between cars. The car smashes this nigga legs in between both of the bumpers of the car, and he breaks both of this dude's legs. Oh, God damn. When they carry him out of there, they literally have two people carrying him up here he got pants on and news carrying the bottom of his leg right here bottom of it there the hair one dude's holding the bottom trying to keep it connected so he can get him to the ambulance because it's so packed in right. an ambulance can't even get to this nigga because we're all double you know how you yes, double sir. parked it's a small street yes, sir. so they're carrying this dude out of there he was the first one so people looking at that nigga's legs being broken like that, like people really felt bad for him. <laughs> and it just slowly yeah, started to develop. A few of the kids that had came to the bay with me was walking around and people were all looking like, man, you're just an idiot. And he's just sitting in the car. And then all it took was for one motherfucker to bust his windows and the mm -hmm. crowd felt it. It yeah. was natural. It wasn't no no. They've seen the videos of the Bay down there. Everybody felt bad for this nigga with the broken legs. Mm -hmm. And they felt like this dude was the biggest idiot in the world. And man, they fucked that car up. Mm -hmm. But man, me looking at it, I'm not going to lie, it felt good for me to watch it. Mm -hmm. It felt good. Like, nigga, he fuck needed this nigga. That's right. like his yeah. I don't never thing. want this nigga to come back out here. Right. If you mm -hmm. don't know that this is a fucking weapon, like, the only people that's supposed to be in here doing this shit is the people that can do it. Because you can kill a motherfucker out here just thinking it's, you know, easy. That now, having an advocate for you at the end of the day, be able to have a, be, be a representative of that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has a stigma. You show on Channel 3 News, it's that and third. They want to throw whatever rap on it. But then they have you, like you're saying, regulating. Still actually giving acknowledgement to when things do go south. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what needs to be highlighted because nobody wants things to go in those directions. But when they do, you know what I'm saying? It's something, like I said... We don't need all the police to be able to make things justifiable. We can justify things as, as it is. That car got what it deserved. The individual at the end of the day still went home. You know what I'm saying? He made it exactly. home. He, he made exactly. it home. Exactly. You feel me? But you know what I'm saying? And way better than the other person that he harmed. You understand mm -hmm. me now? Yeah, so way better. You understand me now? <laughs> way better. Real life, though. He just yeah. has a red car. That nigga got two separated legs. Yeah. Bro, you feel me? Exactly. Real life, that motherfucker though. will never come out there yeah. ever again in his life, and he'll probably have a fucking... And panic it, attack anytime cars pass by him and, going and fast. it keeps the structure in the quote unquote system that, mm -hmm. that is keeps, what it is that's what I'm trying to highlight you, the good you, shit you know it, it does shit. it does cause you have to have some kind of structure the minute that's why it's as bad as it is right now the stuff that we're seeing from it because it's lost the structure completely mm -hmm. man I still talk to these dudes and all that but uh 
I never wanted to be the OG that like hit hey, right on the now vibe. we're talking about the car game or like the car game. Yeah, the yeah, car game yeah, has the, like the, the, it's uh, missing on, a lot I of just, structure. I just heard this term, the takeovers. The takeovers. Yeah. The takeovers. Nah, look, hey, it's like, it's when, when we get past the grapevine, yeah. when we get past the grapevine, we in takeovers. When we go other way, we in side shows. Yeah, okay. Man, we all got it together. So this is how that was uh, born, nigga. I've been around doing this shit. So we've been doing this shit since like 2005, right? There came a, a dead space where the police had got tired of it. So between like man for probably like three years the highway patrol had a contract to be on Crenshaw so they had them a substation at the police station that's right down the block from Wingstop all these videos you see in LA a lot of them are on Crenshaw Boulevard Getting same area bro, talk to me. yeah so the police lie. station is only like a block away from that so when they finally got tired of it they contracted the highway patrol and the highway patrol was able to put 15 more cars out there to police uh, a three mile please. span so imagine 19 police cars that only have to drive three miles that way, three miles this way, and give tickets to any car that looks like it's indulging on that behavior. Yeah. Or what 20 year, bikes. Around what yeah. year was this? Was this was probably like between bike, like yeah. 2007 to 10, yeah. to where uh, if you uh, we were fans of it before then, we had to find other shit to do because no car club love was allowed anywhere where people were meeting up nigga the highway patrol was crashing in there giving everybody tickets and impounding cars so the shit was dead for like three years right mm. uh facebook comes around <laughs> all of us from the bay to la start speaking through facebook mm. so the bay area decides to come down to la so some other people that are at the bottom of the totem pole are talking to people at the top of the totem pole in the bay yep. and tell these people to come down here and we're going to have this big uh, 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 sideshow or whatever. Uh, and they wanted to call it. That's why it was called a Crenshaw takeover because the police had been whooping our ass. They had been giving us tickets and we hadn't been going out there. So when you're mingling in a whole nother city, you're saying we're taking over, like we're taking it back from the police. So okay. there's going to be far more numbers. If they got 19 bikes, we got 1,000 cars. Okay. So that was the whole thing. Whenever the Bay came here, we called it the Crenshaw takeover. But go. the Bay only came here once every six months. So we would go back to being dead. So you had people like me that really like loved it and had a voice. And I used to be on Facebook like, why do we have to wait for the Bay to come down to L.A.? to fucking go out there and have fun because we used to do it every single Saturday. Mm -hmm. And now we're only doing it twice a year, three times a year. Right. So me and a couple of other figures that had a voice out here started doing it more often. And that's how you took the name of uh, Crenshaw Takeover to just throwing a takeover. Because the whole Crenshaw Takeover was involving the Bay coming down, letting you know, like, nigga, we're all as a group this taking this shit over. Fuck, this, nigga, this shit happened exactly this so. We got Crenshaw back through the Bay. We literally did because after that we wow. politicked for it and we were back out there every single weekend to where now two years later it got wild and you've got me and the same voices mm -hmm. back on the internet saying, hey, fellas, we shouldn't be doing this every weekend. We should probably wait till the bay comes down here, man. We're getting out of hand because we're trying to keep the police from getting that contract and coming back out and shutting it all the way down. Right. So those of us that really loved it was like, man, we want to do it. But we want to be able to keep doing it, not yep. just every weekend you burn it out. Crenshaw. Well, Go ahead. that was the Crenshaw. The side show for the Bay, it was the exact same thing. So after those dudes came down here, because we threw a couple of Beta LA movements, but they never cracked off. Well, hold on, so I, want, I, want, I want to make a quick point, because you said the lower ends contacted the Bay to come out. How, how yeah. did they feel? with like the, the They didn't know they were talking to the lower ends. It's yeah. Facebook. Okay, they don't but, know. But when they came out and everything that happened, they, 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 they ended up meeting the higher ends. Yeah, and the higher ends were okay about this? Yeah, or like yeah. everything was... I've represented that in a, a bunch of... We met them. We knew what was going on because we seen it on the internet. Okay. So here's your thing, man. If you're a, a big-time fucking... You're fucking a big-time football player and mm -hmm. you want to throw a game of some of the greats, mm -hmm. you don't have the time to get on there and call her. You're a big-time dude. So right. other people under you that has your word and authority, they're going to organize all that shit mm. for you or whatever. Okay. And that's, that's how you... Mean, nobody at the top of the chain has the time to do all of the other organizing. All that shit happens under them. That's so if fact. you got a car club, man, the president ain't the one... Uh, or he's going to want to say the things and then the lower people of the club are going to be the ones that get on the internet and do the footwork and put it in. Gotcha. So this one happened just with those guys at the top 
These were fans of them in L.A. talking to them. Mm -hmm. Those of us that actually owned cars and was doing that, we're not fans of these dudes. So mm -hmm. we're not on the Internet looking for them mm -hmm. niggas. So we seen the talking going on, and we was like, man, we'll just wait till it happens. Because right. they're talking to these dudes. Well, they end up coming down here. Like I said, we've done them years before. But every time that a club from the Bay came, they never came to the streets. So it made the event weak because people wanted to see the cars that they know from the internet. Well, this particular takeover, the first time we hosted with that name, those guys from the Bay Area actually came to the streets. Hmm. So in. Uh, me and like three other car clubs gave them a promise that we would come back there. So those dudes were like, okay, well, when this thing is going on, when they're planning the one from LA, I'm in the background like, man, I want these guys to come down here, but I don't want them to come down here, all get their cars impounded and <laughs> right. get tickets, and they hate us forever right. because this is not the place to kick it. It's yeah. just these lower-level niggas ain't going to tell you because they're not the ones that's going to get their cars impounded. Mm, they're they fans. They know what they do. They don't have, no, they're fans. They don't have cars. They're oh, spectators. You've right. you got spectators talking to drivers. Right. A spectator's okay. going to always tell you to come out and risk it all. Just like if you've got a street... <laughs> just like if no you've got a, <laughs> if you've got a street gang, the punk-ass <laughs> nigga in the house is always going to be telling the killers to go shoot the niggas. Because he ain't got nothing to risk. He's at his grandma's house. Right. He's telling the killers to go risk it right. all. These guys thought that they were talking to other drivers. They didn't know they're talking to spectators. Right. But when these spectators got them down in front of our faces, we all came out there. That's when we all started to, you know, talk and converse. Like, hey, man, look, that bullshit that you heard, don't even fuck with that. So the first oh one God. we had, I spoke to the guys and told the guys from the Bay, like, hey, we're going to come out there, but this is the risk. I just don't want you guys being upset. This could happen. You guys could all get your cars impounded. Mm -hmm. I was going to end up going to jail. Like, it's hot here. It's bad. Right. Mm -hmm. But we still went. It was a great night. So we made a pact with them that we would go. Well, the That's exact late. same thing happened. The lower level guys are on the internet pumping it up like, come down here, come down here. None of them are telling us that the Bay has been shut down on sideshow activity for some years. <laughs> Ain't none of that shit been going on. But go. when we actually got down there, the real representatives, because now we're talking to the real representatives, they did the same thing. Like, hey, man, uh, this shit ain't really been popping in like two years, man. And really, some of, your, some of them told us, the ones of us that had recognizable cars from L.A., don't even take them out there because mm -hmm. they might get because if and everything that they warned us about it just didn't happen that weekend mm -hmm. the police laid off and let them have a great night so a buddy of mine fresh from hyphy muscle they was running the streets at that time he okay. literally did yeah. the same <laughs> thing that i did oscar gets on the internet and was like hey why the fuck do we have to wait on guys from la to come here to mm -hmm. have a side show yep. because their thing was bay to la they're waiting on la to the bay and they started doing it every single weekend. And then about two years later, I'm literally watching from L.A. as Oscar because I've seen R go through the transition oh first. So while he's pumping it up, I'm looking like, man, this is all bad. I know yeah. where this is going to lead. But I don't want to tell him how to run his city. I'm not from the Bay. Yeah. Nigga, about a year later, he's on the Internet like, hey, we shouldn't be doing this every weekend. <laughs> Let's just wait till L.A. comes down. Because he felt that same love and passion. And he knew, like, man, it's getting out of hand now. I, I, trying to bring it back, though. He was trying to yeah. bring it, you know what I'm saying? He wanted to bring it back. Their club was brought it back. But then it got too wild. Kept shooting. I love Because it started making the news and all that. And that's when it was like, oh, shit, it's getting hot. Yeah. That's how my wall blew up, man. My wall probably had, like, 20,000 people on it. And then I fucked around and went to the Bay. And Stanley Roberts got a hold of my page, man. And that nigga talked about me on Quran for every fucking night. Man. He went on my wall. He had his fans, the Stanleyites or whatever. They were tagging the police and all my syrup pictures and all Ooh. my donut posts. And it blew my wall up. Yeah. Just It let the world know about the culture, like what they're doing right now. Channel 4, Channel 11, they talk about this shit every night. They're saying, we got to stop it, we got to stop it. But they're letting a thousand kids that would have never went out there with their cell phones know exactly where to go. They're sensationalizing it at the same time because they're making money off of trying to stop it. Right. You've got task force officers that are paid just to chase these kids on the internet. They're making and on money the at night. That, that like exactly. During the night, they're that just if keeping those kids coming. aren't breaking the laws, these task force are, they don't have no hours to pay these dudes. Mm. This is the same thing that happened with gang violence in the eighties when we had that You're truce in the eighties. Talking shit right now, bro. They I really stopped a lot of the murders and a lot of these officers were getting laid off. Mm -hmm. I swear to God, man. 
uh, people will never believe it, but man, my family were really involved in this gang culture, and my uncle's house was a house where all the gang members were at. Man, the police dressed up like Crips and came over there and shot my uncle's house up. That's right. Yeah, because they needed to get the fighting going back on. Because if people aren't yeah. killing each other, yeah. they don't have a job. They don't I, I, have I've no heard money. so many type of stories like that. In they LA. dressed up like Crips. So <laughs> how we knew, one of my uncles shot back. At these motherfuckers because yep. they're dressed like Crips. Yep. And then the real police, the crash. Off. Man, when you live that kind of lifestyle, the police aren't as distant as what people imagine. These are police that you know. The same way that I know these drivers out here. You got gang unit officers, man. They know these motherfuckers. You know them every day. You know what they look like out of the uniform. Just like that's my boy. Out of inside that Pooh Shiesty mask, I know what he walks like. Yeah. So I, you know, I know his mannerisms. We know that, or right. whatever. The fucking Corona. So uh, they knew exactly who they were. But that shooting, them writing on the wall, and uh, it kicked back up the gang violence. Yes, yeah, sir. You had like a, you got people that would want to be for peace, but then you got some people that still got rage in their heart. Imagine the whole mm. world saying a peace treaty, but nigga, we just smoked your brother a week ago. Mm-hmm. And now we're all saying time out. Ain't no fucking way. And now you just got to watch me parade up and down your street because now we have a peace treaty. I hear you. But you know that I smoked your brother. That's a fact. And you know me and my homeboys laughed about smoking your brother and we'll probably still laugh about it. Like some people couldn't let the pain go. So all you needed was a little bit of fuel to that fire to kick it all the way back up. And the police added that fire. They definitely it's a did. business. At the door. It's a business. And you said this was your relatives, your uncle's house. Yeah, my real uncle's house, man. One of them uh, got picked up by the police for that shooting. That's how we found out. And nobody in the regular world of America would listen to some gang member saying, man, these motherfuckers had blue rags on. Who the fuck is going to listen to a gang member that's an admitted blood saying, yeah, I shot that police officer, but that police officer was just like a crip shooting at us. Nobody would never believe him. He has no integrity or no credibility whatsoever no. because the projection of what you think of him or whatever. Same thing that you would do, like uh, you would think of the way that they project these street takeovers and then somebody get on TV and say, I'm one of those guys. They've already sacrificed their credibility by showing the clips and putting a narrative on it that they want. What they don't tell you about these street takeovers, man, if you live in, you guys are from NorCal. Mm-hmm. Down here in L.A., the Mexicans and the blacks, they're not like this at all. There's a vibe between us. Like, we're Damn not it. like that. It's just like a prison thing. is a separate vibe on the streets between blacks and Mexicans. Some Mexicans are cool with some black people. It goes whatever, but there's a separate, you can go to areas where, it's no blacks allowed, whatever, whatever. Okay. But through this street takeovers, that's predominantly Mexicans and blacks, everybody's getting along. It is predominantly Everybody, Mexican. yeah, is. Mexican, and everybody's getting along. It's not a racial issue at all. You got blacks and Mexicans fighting together. This town tax shit that we talk about, yes, nigga, they're all on the same team. So some of these same Mexicans that might see me on a Wednesday and be like, man, fuck that Mayate. On Sunday, fun day, nigga, we all taking pictures together and pumped up while cars is doing donuts, man, and we don't give a fuck about race. Nobody's out there looking at skin color. They're looking at car Mm. colors Mm. and rim colors. Mm. That's the most important color out there. Mm. Money to get you a nice car to be able to do that shit. Nothing about race comes up during that. And I think that that intimidates the police because if you have that unity from people they're bigger than the authorities how much does unity mean to you man it's fucking i mean as important to it's more important than a dollar it's more important than a dollar Mm. that that started from family within like blood too as well going through yeah man if you if you be raised up like uh well it's in some people's family values but man you be raised up Broke man, you that was end my up question learning to you, that just to shit. Off of that, Snoopy, because like you said, what? raised up broke. Yeah, you what learn was, values. Who, who, who is Snoopy? Who who are you for the people that don't know? I get who you who, what you represent. Damn near L.A. You know what I'm saying? Man, County for what it is. A person that grew up in L.A. on both sides, man. My dad sold drugs with Free Rick when I was hella hella little. He's one of the original Freeway Boys wow. or whatever, and uh, I grew up hella hella rich, but we were still in the hood because my dad was rich, not my mom's family. My mom's family still stayed in the ghetto. Hmm. So I went to acting school. I went to tap dancing school. I played the violin. But then I still stayed on 83rd in San Pedro where everybody else was fucking broke as fuck. There we go. So I could never, I got clowned about my dad having so much money. 
But then he ended up going to jail like all big drug dealers do, and everything was gone. Mm -hmm. So then I got put on the same perspective. Well, I was always on the same level because even though he had 14 cars and we had all this nice shit, I still, every night, my head was rested in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was still the same values that was taught to me. A lot of the people that was around, they looked up to my dad. So they spoke highly of them, but I spent more time with them than him because he's a big drug dealer. It's not like you could tote around a fucking five-year-old. When, when I used to go places with him, we literally would just go places with soap boxes. We would uh, count all the money on the floor. He'd give them the soap boxes. We would leave. I never knew what was in the soap boxes. So I got older. Like, oh, we dropped off cocaine. We counted all his money and left. Mm. We would just go to different apartments and do that. I didn't know how to count. I knew how to count to 10. So he would just have me count hundreds up to 10 and put stacks on the floor. And we would just go from apartment to apartment <laughs> doing that shit or whatever. Wow, so man, I out. probably thought by third grade, <laughs> I, I was like, man. I thought it was a family business. So I'm like, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. Because this is what my dad did. All my uncles did. I, I thought it was legal. What age was this for you? Man, I was probably like fucking. This started from like five. Don't say that. Till probably like ten, but by the time I got to fourteen, when money is hella important and you really need to be like kind of on that shallow shit, mm -hmm. they was broke as a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So I got to live a real high school life or whatever. My fucking elementary was fucking Gucci carpet and marble stairs, and by the time, so Shit. if I had a choice to pick. The parts that make you in your grown upness, that's around your teens. That's when you're going to figure out, nigga, am I going to college or am I going to jail? Am mm. I gang banging or thugging or am I going to do something right with myself? Mm. I'm glad it went the way it went in the end, but if I had a pick, I would have rather have had money in the teens because that's when you start to recognize what it is. Expensive shoes. Me having expensive shoes in second grade, it didn't mean shit because mm. I didn't buy the shoes. I didn't know how much they cost. Mm -hmm. When you get to ninth and 10th grade, that's when you need them $180 Jordans. This is a real analogy. And that's what I was used it. to. And by the time I got there, I didn't have it. No Everybody want to take care of their baby. I take care of my babies. Okay, you know what? That that teenage year is really what's, what's important. Like 14 to 18, 19, that's, that, that would be That's good. when you need it. Bro. That's when you need I'm it. Because it's fucked up. Everybody wants, oh, you want to be a leader and all this. Yeah, exactly. I want my kid to be a leader whatever. You don't want your motherfucking kid to be an outcast. No. And when you're growing up poor in these at these ages... Being poor makes you an outcast because if you don't have those Jordans that the average cool kids got around this motherfucker, your parents ain't got 180 for them, niggas don't want to kick it with you at lunch. No cap. We all hanging out with the niggas of ours. We all got a chain. We all got Jordans. We all got the nice jacket. We hang out and we hang out with girls that like niggas in nice Jordans yep. and nice jeans and jackets yep. and people of your kind. You don't hang out with us. Or whatever. <laughs> he's hitting, so, it. He's hitting it right on the fucking man, nose. Hell man. yeah. So you'll be outcasted. For not having these Jordans or not having this shit. Man, I had nice shit at Soya, I swear to God. Man, there was a time where everybody was wearing bombers with the fake fur on it, right? Nigga, my dad had money, so he bought me a bomber bombers with the real... with the fake fur. Yeah, with the fake puffy fur on it. Yeah. Or whatever, the puffy fur. That's the fake, whatever they call that shit, fox shit. Yeah. My dad had paper, so nigga, he bought me a leather one with real fur. Real fur is thinner and small. It ain't all fake and buffy like that. Yep. So all the kids at my school made fun of my jacket because it didn't look like that cheap ass one they had. And <laughs> I was embarrassed to wear my jacket because yeah. I didn't understand the difference. And when I told my dad I didn't want it, he's like, man, that's a twelve hundred dollar jacket man. or whatever. It's real fur, so it's thin across the top. It didn't look like everybody when they zip up their fur how puffy it is across the top. Say a that. lot of the money that I had when we was little, I got clown for it. Nigga, I had to carry a fucking tennis racket around school. That wasn't like cool. I carried a violin around school. I went to tap dancing. Like that wasn't cool shit. Everybody in my school alienated me for having that kind of money. Man, I mean, a limo just... used to pick me up at school. Well, my dad and mama, a limo picked me up for probably like two years straight. A limo would come to the school and everybody made fun of me for that shit because I'm jumping in a limo with his tennis racket and everybody wanted to be little bitty gang members. Well, so your dad really had a like Fat. Well, yeah, really? you ain't never heard of Freeway Rick? Yeah. Rick Ross. Yeah. 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 We had, we had, yeah. We had, we had Young Freeway on the show. Yeah, yeah. My nigga, that's my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nigga, Freeway that's my here. boy. Rick, yeah. Rick Ross used to... Yeah, yeah, I've heard, right, yeah, it's all so, really good. So, look, my daddy was around him forever when I was little. Rick used to call my daddy from jail. I met Jay Ross, his son, nigga, yeah. around downtown LA yeah. in the profession I'm in, just on a flute. Right. So when this nigga say who his dad is... 
I would never tell him my dad. It sounds like some fucking groupy shit to say. But we really end up kicking it for like a year. So after about a year, I was like, man, you know, my dad was one of the it's original Freeway shit. boys, nigga. Just, I just told him it's that. Like, shit, bro. And he was like, man, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I kicked it with him all the time. We smoked weed. I never brought the shit up. I always thought about it. I was like, man, that shit sound fake. He never Damn. brought the shit up. Yeah. He, he don't brag about his dad or nothing right. like that. He's on his he own on his, accord. He on his dad was doing like a pop up somewhere down the street. Oh, at the fucking Compassion Care Company. So I just told him the CCC when his dad did that weed. He did a weed brand with uh, whatever, uh, uh, <laughs> nigga. Uh, I told him I was like, man, my dad used to run with your dad. You know, I never wanted to say nothing about it, but he was like, for real, man, come up there and meet my dad. So hmm. we end up being at a spot. I fucking uh, he has a book signing. I buy the book. I have him sign the book. I still don't say nothing about it or whatever because it just sounds like some fucking groupy shit but on my mama. But why though? Why though? Why, I mean, yeah, because he, he knows so many people and he's a fucking uh, big time dude. Yeah. Man, his son ends up coming to get me when I'm walking off. He's like, man, did you tell your dad who your dad was? Did you tell my dad who your dad was? Like, nah, because he had a book sign. There's fucking a gang of people there waiting. Yeah. He goes over there and tells his dad. My dad got one eye, so it's fucking, uh, it's not hard for him to remember. Yeah, he knows. This nigga calls me right over there, gives me his personal number once he tells him who my dad mm -hmm. is. Like, hey, man, have him call me. He knows that I went to acting school, tap dance. He remembers that because he helped me. Oh, my dad, mama, he's looking at me. He's like, bro, I took your dad from a little bit of money to a lot of bit of money. I put you through a lot of nice schools. Man, I hugged the shit out that nigga. Yeah. I'm like, nigga, I know this is why I've always loved you from a distance. Yeah. I said, I've answered the phone when you called from jail. This was on a house phone. When your parents get a call, nigga, you got to get off that motherfucker. When that jail call came, nigga, I knew. I didn't know who it was. I just knew his friend from Rick, his friend Rick in jail, is calling, mm -hmm. nigga, get off the other line mm -hmm. and give him the phone. That was his mm -hmm. most important call. And like I said, my dad was a boss, but I could always tell that whoever was on that phone was the bigger dude. Say that. Or whatever. Say but, that. Uh, Respectfully. I'm hell yeah. With you. Wow, bro. I'm with you. Wow. God damn. This is, I ain't gonna this lie. Is real, this, this is real life exclusive. This is history. I ain't gonna lie. Like, like yeah. you know, everything that you're saying from the car shit to just your life and everything you're going, but, but I got that, Nigga, that pride my shit My dad too. was so big that when I became popular in the car club world, all the drug addicts in my neighborhood thought my dad had bought me that car. That was probably 12 years removed away from his money. That's how big his influence was. My dad didn't have no money to buy me no fucking car like that at all. His life was way changed, but they were used to seeing him with money so long and then just seeing me pop, they still thought it was all tied to my dad. Mm -hmm. but, okay, I want to touch on something real pop. Let me, let me. The, we can talk about how long the re, as being relevant you have to evolve right you yeah, yeah. Say you've been in it for the game for a minute right yeah. and then even just hearing you say your pride shit and wait, not even wanting to tell like you said this, that's, yeah. that's, that's easy that, I feel like that should be a layup type shit to mm -hmm. why you should be able to tell them who you are in that position right but you think mm -hmm. that I feel like your pride and who you yeah, are in the person Right, 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 right. Everybody that knew this nigga for like a piece of something, motherfucker will know you for like, yeah. say you for instance, nigga. Say you go on and this shit goes to crack. There's going to be some girl that maybe you liked and never even gave you a chance that's going to go to bragging everybody about how close y'all was just because she wants a piece of what you've accomplished or whatever. People that probably went to school with you that don't never even liked you a day in your school, the minute this blows up, will look and be like, that's my nigga right there. Mm -hmm. And will really feel like when they run into you that you owe them something because they knew you before. So I never in people's life, it's a lot of people I know that went to the next level. I never wanted to be that friend for them like they think when I see them, I'm gonna be like, hey man, remember back when you was mm -hmm. nobody or you know, be one of them kind of fucking People, cause some people be like they think just cause you're our friends, nigga, you got a million dollars now, shoot me ten thousand real yeah. quick. It ain't nothing to you, you a boss. Mm -hmm. Like, so nah, I would never want to be on that angle of uh, none of the people I get that I know. I get you. And I think that's why he received me so well when he told him, cause he literally watched me walk away from him, cause he asked me like, why didn't you tell me that? When I told him like, man, it just sound like some dick riding shit. He felt it like, oh, I really fuck with you, and he mm -hmm. went beyond like he made me call his number right then to make sure like, bro. You got my number. That's Give lit. him the number. That's lit. Well, but okay, now let's talk on the evolving part of like the youth coming in now. Like, 
you could have that pride to to that, like, nah, this is what it this is what it is, this is the structure, what it is, and then the change of how it is now. I know it's it's not the same no more. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like the, you don't want to listen to the OGs like they yeah. like they used to back in the old days, yeah. right? So, so like, you gotta find out a way to talk to them in their language. Okay. Look, you got uh you got a truth with somebody, you ever heard the term spoon feed? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like but, but motherfuckers don't want to do that all the time, though, bro. You yeah, feel me? I like, just understand. I've always operated like a politician, I guess. So yeah, I just know yeah, how to. Man. That's how I can still talk to them. I like, spoon feed it for them. Before I tell you something negative, I'm going to tell you a couple of things positive. So then you can accept everything that you're getting instead of just coming right at you. Man, right? if I had something uh, about to say about, uh, I don't know, negative about your car that I didn't like. I'm not going to come right up and be like, man, you need to change these wheels. I'm going to come up and compliment the paint, right. compliment the seats, tell you what you did right. And then once we're able to converse about you did right, now the door is open for me to be all the way to be like, hey, you did right. You just need to probably change these wheels and then you'll be all the way perfect. You've got a person's you willing to talk first. back with you now because you didn't just come over here and be like, hey, nigga, don't do this, this, and that. That's how a lot of the people do. Like Your older rappers do that to the young rappers, and that's why they don't have that communication. Your older it's... game members do that to the young ones. You don't have that communication. No, game, You're bro. able to fucking talk to somebody. Then they know it's really constructive criticism and not hate. Exactly. When you're talking to a person, you got to let them know that, you know, it's exactly. for your best, not that I'm hating on what you're doing. So if I would want to speak to the kids in the Bay, they do a lot of shooting in the air at their side shows. I'm L.A., we got gang structures. It's not a lot of that here. Mm -hmm. So it's a certain way I have to tell them that. I can't just jump right on the Internet because I got a bunch of followers and be like, man, you Bay niggas is dumb. Y'all shooting in the air, wasting, but whatever the angle is, some niggas will say, oh, you're wasting bullets. What happens when you really need? There's all kind of angles that L.A. people will take when they want to speak negatively on that part or whatever. So it's a way that I would say it to them. I'm not going, you know, it's not my town. So I got to deliver it in a way where they can be like, man, maybe the homie is right. Instead of me just being like, man, that shit's stupid or whatever. I'm going to, you know, say it in a way to where we can talk about it. Instead of you just being angry about it, and right. now we're having an argument. We're not conversing. We're arguing. And that's what's actually, yeah, no, that's real. Because it actually will happen at the end of the day, because people need that advocate to be able to mediate the peace with, within it all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you uh, when you actually start, I mean, you personally, was you at, was you always in, in, the middle of the, in the middle of the pit? You know what I'm saying? Was you doing the Yeah, shows, from uh, day one, when I first found that shit. I found that shit through a job on accident, man. My uncle Wait, had Wait, what been, a job? Yeah, I found it through a job on accident, man. My uncle was working at Rouse for, like, my dad's brother, the one that's not... He wasn't with the whole drug dealing, so he went the straight route, uh, whatever. And he had a job at Rouse on Crenshaw for, like, some years. And this dude was like, hey, man, you want to get a job up there? This tattoo on my neck is my brother. He had just got killed, like, on my corner. So I just knew I needed a life change because all of my friends was getting killed and going to jail. And I just thought, like, man, I'll just go on that other side of town. I'm from the east side. That's the west side mm -hmm. or whatever. It's a whole different culture, lifestyle. So I just thought throughout the day, instead of being on the east side all day, nigga, I'll just be on the west side working. I'll just come here late at night. And I end up finding all these kids in the parking lot. That was where this scene, man, this shit happens at 1 and 2 in the morning. So if you didn't have a nice car and there is no social media, how do you find out about it? It's like a secret society. Mm -hmm. Now the internet doesn't allow a secret society. Everything that's a secret is on the internet. You but missed that shit? Before you had secret society. I miss a piece of it, but I'm not going to lie. The uh, bigness of it helps. Mm -hmm. So in my generation, of me doing donuts, broader. nigga, if a police was maybe a mile away, Nigga, he could see my gold car spinning in the middle of the streets and know which one he was going to pick from two miles away driving. And now that the news has sensationalized it, you got a thousand kids He's out like, there with their cell phones. Right. So the police <laughs> literally can't see if they was right where he at. Yeah. They literally have to get out their cars and walk in. All they can see is smoke. Mm. The crowd is hiding it. So for that part, is good. But the part that I do miss about like how you said the secret society, our part was only people that actually had a car was there. So it was only the crowd that belonged. So you had way more order because everybody has something to lose there. So people are going to act accordingly. This nigga has a Hellcat. I got a ZL1. You have a fucking Maserati. You got a Benz. Yep. We're going to act accordingly sure. with our sure. cars because we've got something to lose. <laughs> right. And then you bring around a thousand niggas that don't have no car. They just got a gun and some fists that they came in somebody else's car. 
they're going to act mischievously. Right. Because that's the only way they can get attention there. We getting our clout from a Maserati, the Benz, the Hellcat. Mm -hmm. They're getting their clout from fighting motherfuckers and bullying. Mm -hmm. So that that's what comes when you invite the bigger crowd. It's not mm -hmm. car enthusiasts. It's people that are just bored and mischievous that like to break the law. It's almost like a hate thing. Exactly. Those Some of those crowds hate the drivers. Mm. They do. Because that driver can fuck anybody's bitch out there. Not all of them, but you have that vibe. It's just like <laughs> taking your girl to a basketball game. Right. Yeah, you're a rich that nigga, nigga, but if LeBron James, James looks at that bitch right. and uh, wants her, or Kobe Bryant looks right. at that bitch and wants her, you're assed out. Say that shit. So a lot of these dudes come there, and they like these dudes' cars and all that. They're like a fan. If they could suck this nigga's dick, they would. But now they've got their girl there that likes them the same way. It kind of makes like a jealousy thing. Nigga, I didn't like Drake when he first came out. Like, all these fine-ass bitches is telling me about this nigga now. Look at him, he's light-skinned and attractive. Like, oh, this bitch-ass nigga, he can fuck my... Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm tired of this nigga. But I had to accept it. Like, man, this nigga just makes great music. But, yeah. like, you know, you have people oh, present... Yeah. yeah, he makes great music, but if you have people presenting it to you in an angle where it's competition now, you can get upset at it. And a lot of these dudes that come to these shits, nigga, they not car enthusiasts. They just mischievous people with bored. Right. That's how you can see now at these takeovers and sideshows, stores are getting broken into. All kind of crazy shit is going on at the same time while the show is going on because then people didn't come out there to look at no cars. So we we dipping in. We, we talked about the sideshows, the takeovers. Now we got people that have their car clubs. And I know you're familiar with the East Bay Chefs out there in Definitely. that area. Definitely. Big uh, respect to those dudes, man. I really kind of want to capitalize off of that and try and see, you know, regulating that and how they have their, their you know, their... Uh, uh, would it be foundation or how the, their events, yeah. how they yeah. have it, how they establish their events? What's the difference of the structures as far as having those type of car shows? How do you like how, how's that structure? Those structures, when you have clubs like that, just uh, the love that comes from having a group of guys, you get things better than what you would get from just one person just trying to say, Hey, I'm a fucking pub daddy and I'm gonna try to just throw this fucking party, and then you got a uh a personality of a group like the East Bay Shells where you got seven to nine solid individuals away from car clubbing that are smart dudes that are all putting opinions into a pot, uh, all showing up. So now you've got their events that can be lit that doesn't have to have a whole big turnout of a thousand other people because between nine nice cars, if they only get 15 other cars there, if you see the footage, it looks like you slept because you didn't go. Because their structure is so strong as a unit yep. or whatever, it it it's it's like a fucking they call out to more people like that. So other groups that have a unity like that, when they see those guys, guys of respect throwing an event, they're gonna make sure they go. Because now you've got nine good cars right there, you got nine good right here, thirteen right here, thirteen right here. You made for a great event. You're glad those other bums didn't come. Yes, sir. You're glad those people that didn't have anything to lose or have respect for that enthusiasm are not there because those personalities are now in the way. Yes, sir. Or whatever. So with groups like that, huh? Yeah, I'm good. Groups like that, uh, you love to have, and it's not that many groups like that left. Like, uh, my generation of it, you had to be from some type of club to even know what was going on because there was no Instagram for motherfuckers to just say, hey, go to Manchester and Western. But now that you've got the internet, you can call out a herd of motherfuckers that don't care because it's easy. But back then, like I said, if you didn't own a nice car, no one was going to respond to your text to hmm. tell you, like, where are we at. Niggas would look at it like, man, why the fuck this nigga asking where we at? You will take it to another nigga like, why is this nigga texting us trying to find out where he at? Yeah. Nigga, what are you going to do? Just come stand here? Right. We didn't want niggas just standing there. You had to have a key to something That's to stand shit. there. Our mm -hmm. group was called Key Holders. Nigga, if you didn't have a nice car, nigga, you couldn't hang out with us. Man. That was the whole thing of a club. And now you got club, car clubs that got members that don't even drive. Because they're just trying to be deep. It's like a gang atmosphere. So you'll have car clubs that got probably like the more the members don't drive than mm. the actual ones that drive. Mm. Or whatever. Because it's a different atmosphere. Got you. You got more weapons coming out now. Or whatever. Before the weapons would probably be in the cars for the guys that had nice cars just to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. Now you got the weapons coming out there from people that don't drive. Mm -hmm. They're in the passenger seat of this car, this car. They got a weapon. And that's right what there. needs to be changed. That like that little that stigma on it. It's like you know nobody's asking for individuals like that. You don't have a vehicle, all right? Then definitely leave your gun at home. You feel me? But not everybody's really doing that. So I'm just trying to say for you, for your perspective, being an advocate, what would be 
will be a regulation that you will want to apply for that. You know what I'm saying? Man, or we didn't try everything as a well, group. Well, we tried. Like, DJ tried to, you know what I'm saying? He does good with his wet fest shows, trying to regulate side yeah. shows, bringing it into a, a, an area. A controlled environment. There we go. Yeah. So I love those. Okay. I'm just trying to see, like, what will be ways, because I'm... Shout out DJ Tri Tip because there's never been a negative outcome on that one. Yeah. But I'm just trying to see like what will be some ways to be able to like keep them continuously going without having to just like maybe always get uh, uh, people, security at every single corner. People uh, supporting those because then DJ Tri Tip will be like how Tri Tip is throwing Wet Fest one and two. Mm -hmm. If these are supported and people come out and function with it, then he'll be able to afford Wet Fest three and four and five. Uh, Sleepy from Sax B Shop, he throws mm -hmm. the yeah, sack track Sax takeover. Sleepy. He's Sleepy. coming up on number seven. Mm -hmm. uh, the Street Actions, their Bay Bridge ride out. They just did number sixteen. Their Toy Drive is coming up next month. They're on number fifteen. Yeah, they're a club like the. Like they're like a, they're like the East Bay Chef. They all knowing. communicate and talk to each other. When they throw events, they all support each other because they have that structure of yep. uh, they hold themselves accountable. Mm -hmm. They don't have people in their car club that are not trying to actually progress with their car. Right. So you keep a different quality of person around these events. Man, when it first started getting out of hand, us as car clubs, we used to try to do secret things like, hey, don't put the streets on the internet. So yeah. only the presidents will let the members know and the members will let the other people know and we'll be able to go hang out without having to worry about getting shot or okay. robbed. Right, but right. you've got so many people that are uh, through social media being as loose as it is that find out this information. Man, they put it out and everybody that you're trying to keep away from there, they know about it before it even goes down. Mm -hmm. It's just this internet can't keep no secrets. Mm -hmm. There's no fucking see. Ever since Instagram has came, uh, it's been for the good and the better. Y'all generation probably don't remember it, man, but when we used to throw fucking parties, nigga, you literally had to print up flyers and just go to the mall and pass them out to cute girls. That type of advertising For does not sure, go to not Venice Beach. Generation. Exactly. Go to Venice Beach and pass out flyers to people that you I mean, thought yeah. you wanted at your party. Pat this is how parties was popping back before Instagram. Jeez. You had to do on-foot promotions. People went on polls and put up rappers' uh, yep. record uh, like, advertising documentaries and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this generation that we have, you would never do that. You just get somebody that has a gang of followers and he posts a cyber flyer and that's how Facts. it's promoted. So that's yeah. the bonuses of it. Me having whatever, I don't care if you have 3,000 followers or 300,000, when are you even going to be able to reach 3,000 people uh, all at once? Mm -hmm. And then you just grab your phone right here and be like, man, after about a week of this, all my friends should know that this is what's going on. So it happens for the good or the bad. So the negative uh, aspect will always be able to find out because as long as they got a phone, the motherfuckers that you said don't tell, yeah. they trust somebody. So they're going to tell. And then they trust another motherfucker, so they're gonna tell. God, so, it's man, true. God, it's always true, we're right? Always, you God, find out that with murders. A nigga will murder a motherfucker and tell him, "Don't tell." <laughs> say, but and guess what? He loves somebody. He loves somebody. <laughs> so tell. he's gonna tell one to. person. Gotta let it out of his then, brain, bro. Exactly. Can't, and can't that one person that. loves one person away from that room too. <laughs> and he's gotta be like, man, don't tell nobody. But you know who just did that to them niggas? Man, we finna find out with this new shit. That takeoff shit, man. We finna find out because this world cannot deny clout. It's gonna be something. It doesn't matter how rich or how broke people are. They cannot deny clout. Mm. And clout is gonna expose the truth because everybody wants that pat on the back. One person's going to tell another person, and when the wrong story gets out, somebody's going to come out and be like, no, fuck that. This is the truth. And tell everything. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. They probably already did to the police. It's just we haven't found out yet. But I know some people have called the Houston police and was like, wait, 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 wait. Yep. That's a lie what you heard. I was yep. standing right there. Nigga, this is what happened. Yep. It's just you dealing with big money. So, you know, it'll stay under for just a little bit. But even the biggest of money, man, the truth it's, always comes out. Gotta come out. It's, so it's, always, it's, for a, little. it's a little crack. It's just that yeah. little crack. Hell yeah, because there's always broke motherfuckers around it. Yeah. And they need that cyber pat on the back. Somebody's yeah. gonna take that check. But speaking yeah. on clout, we gotta get into it. Bro. Or that clout. How's it speaking or on that, clout? Hold on, hold on a little yeah. bit. It's the new currency. 
Hey, uh, Snoopy, before we even get into what Jonah actually finna say, can I borrow that lighter? Yep, yep, hell yeah. After you, <laughs> yeah, hell facts, yeah. Facts. But yeah, where is yeah. our fucking lighters? Bro, bro? we started I, I, with like three or four. Nigga, days. we literally had to stop and buy this right now. <laughs> bro, we stopped and bought up. this <laughs> right God, now. We were smoking God. in the car. <laughs> thank you, God. The was lit before we jumped in the God, car and dude. then went out in the car and we literally had to pull over. And buy the new one. Yeah, and I was just telling him, nigga, in the freezing cold last night at two in the morning, I had to go to the store and buy another lighter that I lost last night at like two something. <laughs> See, these lighters is no fucking stop that stealing our stop stealing our fucking lighters, y'all. Whoever y'all really out there. Yeah, man. man. Mine, I keep a table. I got to set up like how we're all vibing here. Man, it's always lighters on the table. They always walk up out of there. They got, I got two lighters a bit there forever, and they don't work. That's why no one stole them. Mm. They don't Put work. Put them back. Every th- exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Put the wrong motherfuckers right back. That's hella funny. But speaking on the cloud <laughs> shit, two like, years. I know you... You just remade your Instagram. Some yeah. shit that happened. I want. I want to know what happened, bro. Because I. But then I, I also know that that shit really doesn't matter to you too. Because where you come from, that 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 that's easy yeah. to build back too, like, right? Like uh, Steve yeah. will do it with your Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Man, like, uh, before, like I said, Stanley was the first one. Man, when Instagram first came, before the police were on there that heavily, man, that mm-hmm. place was like lawless. You could say any kind of hate speech. It wasn't a such thing as hate speech. You never get that email. You could say whatever the fuck you want. You could post whatever the fuck you wanted. It People post guns, Twitter. all kind of shit. Well, when they started getting threatened of the power that we had, my shit had started getting around like 50,000. You're seeing pictures of blacks and Mexicans out there hugging, holding the Mexican flag. We've got this red, black, and green flag. You've got like a unity vibe going on. The Street Racers Task Force, I I think they started getting on Instagram and pressuring them to knock down not only my page, all of us that had a big page that was calling together those crowds. They tried to give me a charge, man. I had to hide out for like a year, man. God. They were giving me a leading an unlawful assembly. Wait, not like how? Like from Instagram to the to the to the page? Like, That's a, like, like, a, like a like a there, Rico man. charge for street takeovers. They was treating the car clubs like gangs. And because my page was a page where you got 60,000 people on there, I'm saying Influence. let's all go to Manchester and Western at 2 a.m. Let's go to Wingstop no. at 1. Let's go to Slauson and Western. I'm an organizer. So yeah, that's organized like influence. My boss. The, similarity, saying, the similarity for you actually being that. No, no, they, they, no, no. That I mean, mean, that was their their look at it. Like, if your page wasn't saying go here, these people wouldn't know where to go. They're trusting your reputation that you had. We were popular in the streets before Instagram. So when Instagram blew up and Facebook and all this, people trusted our word because they've already seen us in the streets doing this shit. So me saying go to Wing Stop at one and somebody else saying go to another street, more people gonna go where. I said go because you're gonna. It's a bigger following, right. and so I have a more fucking influence, influence with the people or whatever. So the police were looking at me and a couple of other accounts down here. Like these are our mob bosses, and one by one they was arresting all of them with trumped up charges, just trying to scare them into shit mm-hmm. and like compromise their lives. I just fucking. Uh, I mean, it's just stepped the fact away that, for a bit. Fact of the matter that you're able to bring an X amount of people together. You know what I'm saying? Five hundred thousand plus. You know what I'm saying? Two thousand people to an actual area you know what i'm saying that's intimidating enough you know what i'm saying definitely so definitely. then you look at it the fact that like even still w- whatever is going on there we want to pr- promote uh positive and safety regulations things like that so that nobody gets harmed but we're going 110 on the 110 stop but, playing but I, <laughs> <laughs> this my nigga this my nigga <laughs> you seen that my nigga. Yeah, yeah. My nigga. but you come back you actually still team. talking about the toy drives that you got going on yeah so i'm saying to like and that's just that's just it around the holiday season Y'all positive perspective people, you know what I'm saying? There's, yeah. Y'all always pushing P, you know what I'm saying? When we say yeah. P out here, peace, positivity, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, when y'all over here still at night and uh, at the at the at the at the takeovers or even at the side shows or even in the middle of the day, at the end of the day, it's, it's just it's a it's an open environment. But then to the what I'm trying to say at the end of the day, that stigma that they say on it, yeah, what is gonna be the thing that's gonna be able to like justify it? Like what's what's gonna what's gonna make it in a sense? Not saying a normal thing. But what's going to make it like so that way it's not always going to be popped up on the news because there's several other things that should be on there. Yeah. If nobody got harmed that day, it shouldn't have been on the news. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think the news angle on it, they're trying to get funding towards it and funding out of it. You look, think about how much money they make in impound fees when you can tow 30 something nine cars away from one location and then go to another location. You got me up in my eyes a lot to that shit, bro. Or whatever. So it's, uh, it's a politics. As far condition. as the police, hell yeah. Everything yes, is. You got politics. me opening my eyes. Hell yeah. yeah. You got motherfucking sergeants uh, before they had a street racers task force because they literally have 
a street racist task force. Yeah. And these guys live on the internet heckling guys like me and the most of that, any guys out there that have respect or have a nice car, they're watching. So mm -hmm. they can come and take the motherfucker anytime they get to know us, like, well. Right. Nigga, they want to impound our cars. We're like Pokemon cars to them. They want to collect us or whatever. They're looking at you on the internet. They're watching us posting videos of us breaking the law and seemingly getting away like with it's, it. It's really they somebody like at the their smile. desk looking at, like, a random person. A lot of them. Yeah, cops. Hell yeah. A these, lot of them. These motherfuckers, Hell man. Yeah. Hell yeah. They put on it. They, they brag about taking our cars on the internet, nigga. They have a whole fucking Snoop, I've, so I've it's been funding you for time. The last five years, nigga. I mean, I already know what it is. Okay, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah I already yeah, sure. know what it is. I, I already know. They talk about <laughs> it on news. Find you this new profile. I was like, God damn. Yeah, I'm on number five. He bro, was, I was, uh, bro, he bro. was sick, bro. He I, was like, we gotta tap in with Snoopy, bro. But I can't find bro, him. I was like, I was we got sick. it. I was like, do we have to call Tone? I was like, I don't know what to do. I was just about to say, but shout out to Stay Shitty and the team, bro. You already know they they hold it down. So yes, shout out about they get told. Hell yeah, he helped get the little page. Only got four thousand and. The fucking 4,000 came from him and Eddie, like, blasting me out there, telling mm -hmm. niggas. Marlo and them blasting me out. Roach blasting me out. A few of my close homies blasted, blasted me out. A lot of that 100,000, a lot of them came through a lot of news hype, so I wouldn't expect a lot of those people to come back. Some people followed for negative reasons. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to see, you know, so mm -hmm. they're not going to follow again right. or whatever. They just came to see negativity. So I didn't expect that again, but it's cool. It's getting me down to my core audience. Because I could post it a is. picture on 116,000 page, and if this is a personal picture of me lighting this weed, it'll literally probably... Out of 100,000 people, man, this motherfucker had like 700 likes. Mm. And then I get a page that only has like fucking 4,000 people, and that same picture will be close to that. But right. that's through actual motherfuckers that really fuck with They sought me out. They mm. looked for me. Mm. Like, oh, they took Snoopy Show too? Let me just type in three and see if he's there. Yeah, that's what I've got. Niggas have typed in four, influence see if he's never there. Dies. That's yeah. what yeah. needs to be capitalized. That in, the influence never dies. Never dies. Because like, then yeah. they, man, they can do what they want to do. When I say they, I mean they. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, the like powers. They. Yeah. You feel me? Whatever they can do what is. they want to do. But at the end of the day, you always going to be reborn. Yeah. No matter what. And your crowd, like Jesus Christ, is always going to be able to follow. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. No, hell yeah. Man, I always <laughs> use that as an example because my crowd came from outside of here. And that was the same thing, like, uh, with Jesus Christ. Bro, if you know the story, he performed all kind of miracles in Jerusalem, and they called him a carpenter. Mm -hmm. And the minute he went out and performed these miracles away... They called him the savior. And then when he came back to Jerusalem, that's when these people were like, here's our savior. Hey, but you still have motherfuckers. For real. And fun. uh nigga, a lot of the other cities that seen what we were posting from the Bay to LA, all of this shit going on. A lot of people in other states didn't know where I was at. They didn't know where they're just seeing wild shit going from this right. filming or whatever. They made it what it was. And then the city, like after seeing that, like. I got a lot of people down here. It's like, man, fuck that nigga. That nigga worked in Rouse, like where my start came from. Mm -hmm. And then through the internet getting so big, them same motherfuckers now is like, oh, that's my nigga. Mm -hmm. that they, Because they see other motherfuckers loving me and they mm -hmm. see what it turned into. But seeing it on the ground floor, they was like, oh, that shit ain't nothing. Right. Or whatever. But being who you are at the end of the day, you still don't show no bad blood to nobody. Nah, hell no. Nah, because I, I understand that shit all the way, man. That shit was already going I uh, I, I before me and it was the same shit. I have asked this question in a long time, but I feel like this is, I really want to ask you this. Is, are old friends as good as new friends? Or, or, or wait, wait, wait. Old friend, new friends as good as old friends? Or old friends always better than new friends? It's a little bit of both. A little bit it's of both? a little bit of both. Because uh, sometimes new friends will call it like they see it better than old friends. New friends will call it, man... That light right there, hmm. nigga, if I'm right up on that motherfucker, it's blinding. It's blinding. I can't even appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But the minute you get me away from it, it's as glorious as it is. Hmm. Some motherfuckers that knew Kanye West, that knew him regularly, like every single day, that personality was a bit much. A motherfucker saying, I'm great. I'm going to be this. Like, it was blinding. But for people way across the way... Just like that light over here, nigga, they seen exactly what the fuck the nigga was talking about. Right. They seen it from a distance. Right. And that's what the Bay was for me. That's what New Orleans was for me. That was Detroit. It helped shine the light back here because to these niggas, I was just Snoop. But when they seen, I introduced, I literally introduced the Bay to L.A. And through my personal friends, it made motherfuckers that been knowing me forever that would only call me Deshaun or my real name. 
them calling me Snoop now. Nigga, my grandma, before she passed, called me Snoop a few times because they seen all these different strangers of different races calling me this title. Right. It's yeah. making it like natural. You Like I said, it's a separation between blacks and Mexicans here down in L.A. Yes, sir. A lot of my friends in the Bay are Latinos or whites. So my grandma, after being raised in this world of being separate from black, she's 80-some years old, mm-hmm. watching 15 white dudes and Mexicans outside the house mm-hmm. for her grandson over a fucking Camaro. But you see the unity because they've all got a Camaro or yeah. something that looks like, like, oh, this is why you motherfuckers all kick it. Oh, yeah. I ain't gonna lie, it's so much shit to talk about. Cause that, that bro, Camaro, we got so much, you just brought bro. me back up. That Where Camaro, we, at, you know, we so, can keep got going. rid of the Camaro. I didn't even One get rid of it, you, you still never got rid of it? I never got, I got rid of it out of my house, nigga. That Camaro was like a person, bro. That Camaro got wrecked. The Camaro got totaled. It was so so much of an emotional thing. I, I never even showed it, didn't yeah. talk about it, nothing. And what was crazy, uh, one person, I crashed that motherfucker. One person got like a fucking 10 second video of that motherfucker parked and crashed. It looked like the Incredible Hawk hit it on both sides. I was nowhere to be seen. Everybody and their mama knew this. Everybody and their mama thought a nigga was uh, dead and leaving me hundreds and hundreds of messages, but I was just so distraught over that car. I never thought I would see it wrecked like that. I (laughs) never thought I would ever see it wrecked like that, and I didn't fucking talk about it. Capitalize off of this, because I'm not going to lie. I really want to say this again. We could talk to Snoopy for damn near, like, literally, like, the whole entire night. Oh, Oh, no. I'm running all the time. Don't, because just keep going. But your cars. How many of them have you had? Because you, I, I've, I've seen. Because we haven't even touched on. This. We haven't touched yeah, like, yeah, we, like, yeah, we, yeah, we have <laughs> a lot of stuff. I ain't gonna lie to you, so I'm like, fuck. Right but now, but let's just dip into like some some car enthusiast type thing on this avenue for yourself, for personally. Right. I see now, you get the G wagon. Yep. Yeah, uh, you know, being like a muscle car dude, that shit don't even count or whatever. I barely drive it, but uh, yep, a G wagon. I got two Trailblazer SSs, two black ones. I got a Grand National. I got a Z01, uh, older model Porsche truck, a fucking uh, uh, <laughs> 2001 Camaro, that green one. The you green got more Camaro cars than little baby. That I, uh, oh, my mom man. Really does. It was a good pandemic, man. <laughs> it was a good pandemic. Uh, I was a real ass shit. When he said the Grand National, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the oh, fuck? Yeah, yeah. Grand motherfuckers just sitting in the garage with a bunch of clothes on it. If you could have any car, you know what I'm saying, just to speak on yourself personally, just get, you know what I'm saying, what would be a car that you just, three, three, three cars, three cars. Man, all of those super expensive cars, like one of the ones would probably be one of the names of one of the expensive ass companies that make those. Those individual cars. I like just went to the museum. One of those fucking here. super cars or whatever. And then when you say like that, I'm the same like McLaren. Are you saying uh, no? No, nah, that's a basic one, but that would be one too. That's but no, nah, they got those other like, co- I just they got the these museum companies the that make these cars that like are only for man. Can you give me one of these names, man? You know this lifestyle. Man. Like give the little armored truck names. that Chris Brown got. That you can't. I sh- like that one too, but that's a truck, man. They got a few sports car companies oh, that what only the f- make. I can't think of one of those names either. It. But if it was the top three, we'll leave. Huh? I got to say, I got it right here. I got it. it was literally over here. Pagani. Pagani. Yes, Pagani. Pagani. Exactly. Pagani who are. Baby. Yeah, okay. Yep. So one of them is them. And then you could just go standard for me, uh, a fucking uh, somebody's Lambo. And then. Truck? Car. Uh, car. And then uh, and then a fucking uh, a old school, but like one of these like stupid old schools. Like, uh, what, like training day type thing? Like uh, Vin Diesel worthy. Nah, training day. You want a challenger? I think my Grand National is better than fucking. Facts. Like, right, 10%. Or, or whatever. I'm talking you know about like some shit is damn near unattainable. Like, not unattainable, but like those bills that be like 300,000. Like, uh, fucking. You ever seen uh, Sylvester Stallone's movie, The Expendables? Yeah. That truck that he drives. Oh, oh, some, some, some different shit. Yeah, okay. exactly. Are oh, you on some? Dev- you, yeah, yeah, I'm just, you Because you're some. saying top three. I don't want to name some shit. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's true. That yeah, true. I don't want to name some hey, shit. Let me I can have. have yeah. right, okay, I can All of the shit you. I like, I already got. Like, if it's attainable, the man, that Camaro was a dream. My Z01, that was a dream. Facts. I got that motherfucker. The Grand National was a dream. Emphasize that I got that motherfucker. The Trailblazer. I end up with a second one of that, but shit, that was because that motherfucker's fully built. Man, it's a race truck. It's not just a fucking regular trailblazer, man. That motherfucker's, it's not registered here in California, man. I can't even get that motherfucker registered here. Loki's saying yeah. it's a race car, y'all. If you want it, you know, hit him up. 
Yeah. You gonna sell it? Do you, huh? You gonna sell it? I'll sell the first one. The second one I got from a close friend of mine, man. I, I would never sell it. I would only sell it back to him. Uh, once a person puts that kind, it was just like the love that I had my my Camaro. I swear to God, nigga, I totaled that car, right? I kept it in my garage, nigga. I have a Geo, uh, a G wagon, my Z01, my Camaro, and a Porsche truck sitting outside with a wrecked Fourth Virginia Camaro in the garage. Oh my God. For real, that Camaro stayed wrecked in my garage. The only thing that the blue one, right? Camaro, no, my red no, gold one, the legend one. The, okay. The blue, the blue one sat outside. It never made the inside of the garage. Okay. I protected a wrecked car more than a car that drives. Say that. That's shit. how much the car and, meant and to me. Any of the niggas that follow me that will tell you, like, oh, nigga, whenever I went to the garage, you see them motherfuckers right there, bashed. Like, it looked like the Hulk socked it on both sides. Man, the braking system was out. I had a motor swapped, and the braking system was out. I went through a light probably doing, like, nigga, a hundred, nigga. I got hit by a, a Mercedes Sprinter van and a Honda CRV Ooh. on both sides. The only thing that kept it from getting fatal, my car came with sub connector frames, so that kept the car from imploding. It's thick ass bars under the fucking frame of the car that go around both sides, mm-hmm. cause both of them cars would have came inside. We got hit on the quarter panel and my boy's door. Damn. Oh, yeah. it was right like, through it a light. Like, it was like so. That. Imagine going through a red light. Yeah, like boom. Yeah. Just like boom and then boom. Yeah. Imagine going through a red light doing 120, but knowing your brakes don't work, but for like a half a block. We were at a performance shop, so we were dyno tuning the car. So the whole thing, you're street tuning the car, you have to drive it fast. The brakes worked inside the shop, but the car was only doing about five miles per hour. I'm doing 120 driving up fucking Normandy. Nigga. Right when I passed the shop, all my homeboys are filming because we're trying to get this car right for an event. We finally got it dialed in after months oh, of it sick. running soggy. I'm fucking nigga. sick. And I, we drive by, boom, I do it right out the window. My that my boys is filming, and we got like probably like a block before the light. And all of them, are, one of them's taping the guy that sold me the truck. He's filming. He's like, why aren't they stopping? Whoa. And they see my brake lights. And they see we're still moving, and you literally hear my boy got a video. You hear whoa, 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 because you can see that nigga. We was going through that light. I'm stomping on the fucking brake, nigga. That motherfucker's not stopping. Pull the emergency brake. I told my boy, I was like, man, we going through the light or whatever. It's two cars stopped, so all I could do is slam into the back of them, and man, we probably would have got ejected out that motherfucker. We were moving. God it's damn. two. It's a main street. We're on fucking Normandy and El Segundo. It's one of them fucking like the little bus lane, the gutter lane. That's open. And then God went through that and bounced back out there trying to just get through. Once I knew me and him was going through, because it's like a long distance, I'm like, man, this motherfucker ain't stopping. We moving. We hit that gutter lane like that. I just gun that motherfucker again, just trying to get through through the light as fast as I can, nigga. And this fucking Hispanic lady in a burgundy CRV, I'll never forget it. It looked just like that State Farm commercial when they're talking and the car just comes out of nowhere. My boy got his computer on the passenger seat. Or whatever, my nigga Sean. Nigga, he's looking at me. I look when we go through it. The CRV, I'm like, that's the door. Boom. But my adrenaline was so pumped. That fucking, uh, my adrenaline was so pumping. Nigga, nothing happened. Boom, it hit the door. He looked at me and was like, you good? I'm looking at this nigga like as close as you are. And all I see is a fucking Sprinter van coming Fuck. through the light. And I couldn't even say nothing to him. It's like slow motion. I'm looking at him and the Sprinter. And, I, and nigga, like I said, he had a computer in the motherfucking oh, car. We tuning sick, it. Man. Nigga, all the glass broke from the whole Camaro. All the glass came in when the Sprinter hit it. His computer hit me like right in the face. Ah. Right here, nigga. And the car pulled over to a complete stop. Just boom. Right there. The motherfucker pulled over to a stop, and I jumped out and looked at it, man. And that was like, you hopped out, you was fine, like, like yeah, that, man. I was so excited, and I loved the car so much. Out. I just wanted to see if I could bring it back. The T tops was off the motherfucker. I was God, going to man. go buy a Trailblazer. You're so descriptive. It's, I really visualized that whole entire thing. thing. You was getting ready thing. to buy a Trailblazer. I was on my way to buy a Trailblazer, and uh, my boy. He's a dyno tuner. He was like, man, let's tune the car. Are you sure the brakes work? Because we tried to do it before and they didn't stop. But we were only doing like 20 miles per hour, so it wasn't nothing deadly. So my boy that worked on the car was getting them to stop in the shop, but it, the car is only moving around the shop. It hadn't got 
full speed behind it. They are hydraulic brakes, so they need air to go through it. The line had, uh, it didn't have the hydraulic line in there, so the air that was blowing, my boy had heard it, we just didn't know what it was. He was like, hey, there's an air line loose. That was the pressure that's supposed to stop the brakes. It'll stop it doing five or 10 miles per hour. It wasn't yeah. stopping it doing 100, and we no. just didn't know what it was. I wasn't working on it. I don't fucking work on cars and shit. My boy was doing it. It was just like a little fucking error that nigga almost Could've fucking killed it. me. But uh, I know it wasn't uh, on purpose and shit. It was just, you know, whatever. But uh, we went through there, man. Niggas got we really gotta give a them footage a of, uh, they got a footage of that nigga, I swear to God, nigga. Uh, the video went viral when I looked at it. Uh, the car, seeing it wrecked like that, I wasn't in the exact video. My boy pulled up. I got in the truck and waited till the police came there. I can't really say on camera what really happened, but I waited until the police <laughs> got there. But a nigga filmed the video. He's got like seven seconds of the car demolishing. Everybody's saying, rest in peace, and they're passing all around. Nigga, that video looked like a dead person. Should've like walked, the car, the way that the car looked. All the windows are broken out. All the windows are busted out. You know, Camaro's got that big tail window. Nigga, all the windows are busted out. Both sides are fucked up. It looked like I didn't make it. And when people not seeing me in the video, they merely thought that I was dead. I always joke about, well, no, the world always jokes about uh, deaths and threes. Nigga, Morris, uh, no, the nigga that produced uh, fucking Boys in the Hood had died. Yeah. Nipsey had got killed. I wrecked that car, John nigga, like, John, yeah, John Witherspoon, yeah nigga, I wrecked that car, like, two weeks later. Crenshaw had had three deaths in that month. Because when John, when he died, everybody talked about oh, Boys in the Hood time and too, around Nip Crenshaw. Too? Huh? That, was that car was around, yeah, I wrecked the car probably, like, two weeks after he got killed. God damn, So man. I was like, I always said to myself, I was like, damn, Crenshaw had three great deaths in a month. Like, it was all in that same month. Now, that's something that needs to be recognizable because for you to actually say that for yourself, man, there's a lot of people out here that really do factor you as a staple of that area. You know what I'm saying? This yeah. area, this county, this city. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So that, that needs to be something that needs to be. And I would even, like, not even on my own hand or no shit like that. Like, I've said that, like, with celebrities, like, you notice it comes in threes like that or whatever. So just being a person to keep account like that, I said it when Nip died, like, damn, what's going to be number three? Because I was literally sitting in the shop. If you know anything about gang culture, uh, uh, Nip is uh, Nip is from 60s, and my partner, I was with, he from Hoover. So uh, they beef. So before Nip's death made the internet news, just on the gang wire, a partner had called my partner and was like, hey, be on the lookout, man. Nip got killed. So you would just assume that it was their enemies. Mm. So you think, you know, in the world of retaliation, even if it wasn't them, some people that are upset are going to come kill some of their enemies because they're hurt about this loss. Uh -huh. So my boy had got that call, and I just happened to be there. That was after Witherspoon. I was like, I related it right to Crenshaw because Nip is Crenshaw. Fucking uh, my boy, he's Crenshaw or whatever. And I've always, all my merch, if you look on my any of my Fast Life merch, it says Crenshaw's Finest. Or whatever. I've always used that street as a representation of my brand because that's where we hung out at before the filming. That's just where the cars be at. Yeah. So whatever. My dad had a shop on Crenshaw when I was a little kid. I used to sweep in front of that motherfucker and I always knew one day when I got a nice car, I would drive up and down it. I didn't know that it was car clubs and no shit like that. I just noticed when I used to be out there sweeping that cars that were nice, I would literally see them drive up and I would see them come back in 30 minutes. And if you swept out there long enough, I would see them do that three or four times a day. But I didn't know that they were car clubs and they were just going to meet and kick it. Same shit that I ended up doing when we were in a car club. <laughs> right. Go to Crenshaw crazy. to eat, go to go hang out with these niggas. It just leaves you to drive up and down that street. But right. when I was like nine, I was like, man, I can't wait to get a nice car and fucking just blast my music and drive up and down this street. I didn't know till I actually got the job on Crenshaw because so many years had passed in between that time when I was old enough to drive, when my uncle invited me up there, I just happened to be out there getting carts. And that was a parking lot where all the car clubs came at. And they all just filed in like a secret society around 1230 at night, man. Fucking 75 cars all came with these fancy paint and wheels. Everybody had music and they're playing and they're kicking. Everybody smoking weed and drinking. And I'm just like, what the fuck is this? Or whatever. And that uh, what you brother, think that was a changing point? Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was on a regular like setup, man. Kick
kicking in the neighborhood. My brother had just got killed. I had just got that job over there. So my hanging out was in front of burger stands or liquor stores where people were getting killed. Like, man, when you be so broke, man, people will live a life you kind of, you expect, like, if you're a fucking, if you're really with that nigga, one day you might die doing this. And not that you want to die in front of that store, but you love all the other niggas that's out there. So if all you and your homies, that's the life you chose. If y'all man enough to go stand in front of that liquor store, nigga, that's what we doing. If motherfuckers mm-hmm. come through here and shoot, fuck it. Like, nigga, we together. Mm-hmm. Like, those are really your brothers. That's why motherfuckers have that kind of love for gangs because some people get raised in that culture. Those take the place of your mom and dad being gone. All these niggas you hang out with that's a little bit older. Mm -hmm. They show you the ropes to bad shit, but then you learn the ropes to good shit too, so that's why you take it all in stride. It's fucked up a motherfucker show you how to kill a motherfucker, but that's the same motherfucker that's going to show you how to respect older women. Like, it's just, it's crazy how it comes. You just go, you got to be from there to fucking understand. Nah, it, I know, yeah, but not, for real. No, I, I get you. You just got to be you. from there to understand. I get you. It. Before we sign out of here, Snoopy, I ain't going to lie to you through the experiences that you went through and through the conversation that you've been able to deliver to us and everything that you've been able to say. What's been your most memorable moment that you've been able to, like, you can be able to uh, say that you've been able to learn from? You said that you lost your mother. You said you lost a lot of relatives. What's been something for you, person, that you learned from for you that's been able to keep you going as a man? Damn. Uh, you in deep, my boy. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to figure out which, <laughs> which one, nigga. Which, uh, man, it probably started with, uh, with the mom early. Like, she died when I was, like, five. Hmm. And, uh. It just, it grow you up like hella fast, like hella, hella, hella fast. I didn't understand it. I used to be around like older people when I was like nine and 10. And these motherfuckers would just be amazed. Like, man, this dude is so mature. This dude is so smart. And I didn't get what they was talking about. But just with her being uh, my number one person and being dead, it forced me to be around a lot of grown people. So I got a lot of the ugly truths about the world that, parents that love you hide from you mm-hmm. your parents do their best to hide ugly truths from you when they raise you and they want you to figure out this shit when you get old enough to be able to take it in i've learned that go ahead yeah no that's for real no, like that's, that's the job tri- if you trip. had a kid a right trip. now like man i smoke weed every day man if i had a fucking five-year-old looking at me man i would tailor the way that i probably wouldn't smoke weed right around him you got no kids i don't want you, nah no kids? i just wouldn't want you know i judge it different like uh, rap lyrics I don't give a fuck What these niggas Are saying in their songs But if I got me A four year old Listening to this shit Now I give a fuck What they saying in their songs Cause I know His mind can't separate Between what's real And what's fake And what to do And what not to do mm. Man When I was coming up Man I wanted to be Easy E and them Man you, you look up to them So much And then you find out Later man A lot of these niggas Was gay They wasn't no gangsters They were None of that Kids don't know The difference in that Nope So just with her Being gone early I found out a lot of ugly truths because it wasn't no people around to hide it. The people around, nigga, my grandma that had me thousands. in there, she didn't want me in the house. Because now, not my mother's mom, I had got adopted and I had to go to my dad's mom. So she didn't want me in the house. She used to say it all the time. I'm too old to raise some more kids because she was already an older woman. But it was just nowhere for me to go. My actual parents that had me, my mom's mom, she didn't have enough financial money to keep me. So they put me right into a home. And she would have kept me way better than anybody else. But that's just what the state do. The state comes in. So they came in and took me from my grandma's house. So my pops actually was adopted too. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. So I don't really, I don't, after, after, my, my, after my dad, I don't really know no blood. And after my mom... Uh, uh, her father That's died. That's how it is for her, me. Her dad died over here on the street on, on, in South Central when she was thir- uh, 13, I want to say it was, maybe even younger. And then I only had my grandmother. So for me personally, I only grew up with my grandmother biological blood. My grandmother. Exactly. That's mm-hmm. I'm that kind of baby. This I just me. missed her for some years because when they put me through the system and I went with the other grandma, I wasn't around that family because this is the family. My dad had all that drug money, but it's not paper. It's not paper money that you can see it's not legal money Mm -hmm. so he had to pay her he redecorated her house bought a new car and uh to tell for her to take the responsibility of me because my dad and my mom wasn't married she's just a legal guardian so she had to go and adopt me through the processes of like like a stranger you're breaking down a little bit for me for my family too because these dots that i went through my 
and this is gonna go down after the fucking question. No, we'll talk about this. No, hell no. Please. <laughs> this is wild to me. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is I don't believe in ancestry, but I believe in this. You feel me? So the like, same way you said when you don't know nobody, nigga. My whole life, I thought my life would stop after my grandma died, cause nigga, there's just no whole family for me. What's my mom? That was it, nigga. My dad's side of the family, they didn't all accept me mm-hmm. like that. So, nigga, it was my grandma. And my other auntie, that's my mom's little sister, because they felt the pain of, damn, this nigga five and his mom's gone. Mm-hmm. So they always treated me different. Nigga, my grandma, I called her mommy, like how my auntie called her mommy, because that was her real mom. I didn't know my grandma's name wasn't mommy, so I was like 13. I answered the phone, and they called to ask to speak to Pearlene, and I hung up on her, because I really thought mommy was her name, because everybody I was around, my aunties and uncles, called her mommy, and she really treated me like a mom because that was her daughter that died. Nigga, I like Lucky Charles. I swear to God, my grandmother used to pick all the marshmallows out of them to give me a full bowl of marshmallows. But all of this stuff, like, they just felt a different way. I felt it when I was older. I didn't get it then. I used to really feel like, damn, out of this family, you know, you be a little kid and be airy. I'm like, I'm the golden child. Mm -hmm. It was pity. Mm -hmm. It felt bad for me. When I got older, I got to see, like, oh, shit. They felt bad, so they went the extra mile just because. Say that shit. They knew that's, what I didn't have. That's how it was for my older brother. Cause at the end of the day, like we tried to, I don't, we do. I mean, me being younger, I didn't know what was going on. But when Bruce came around, which is my dad's name is Bruce, when Bruce Jr. came around, we catered to him in ways that you know what I'm saying. Exactly. You know what I'm saying. So I, I honestly, you didn't I, want to know the truths, right? And there was some truths that we didn't exactly. want. <laughs> no. Even me yeah. too, though. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> No cap, yeah, because no you cap, get though. in the family, you understand what to be no taken cap. and sacred. <laughs> no cap. Damn, that's a trip, bro. That's the culture for you right there, though. Yeah, I'm hearing yeah. it. That's the there. culture for you. Yeah, that's what we inherit being broke, family secrets. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, Snoopy, for real? No. Yeah. Hey, no cap. Uh, family no cap, secrets. Though. No, I, gotta, I wanna get to because I'm new, I'm new to LA, bro. I've been here for about six months now, a little bit under. So like I what are some things being in this city that you should not do? Like, just one thing. You can tell me, like, like being here. Like, Basic like, shit, not wearing no kind of jewelry just around this motherfucker. We all seen it through Instagram, but it's the real fucking truth. Mm-hmm. And for people that live here, it's so much of our truth. Man, I don't want to sound insensitive, but, man, sometimes the shit, like, it's damn near funny to us. You see another rapper get shot or robbed on there, and it's just like those of us that just know better, you kind of can't help but to be cynical a little bit because it's just like, man, nigga, what you thought? Yeah. Like, nigga, this is what's happening around here. Nigga, mm-hmm. don't wear no fucking fancy watch around this motherfucker. The people that are from here, they can get away to doing it because they know how to do it. Right. But you just can't be from out of town balling and just come around this motherfucker because some of these things look nice and they're just not. And some of them are nice, but the people around it are not. Mm-hmm. Because they know that's around there. You be outside at all? Like you be going out? Man, like your I bars barely clubs? be out like that, nigga. Yeah. I used I lived my whole life outside. That's how I mounted that big following. But uh, all of these things and the stars, it just happened to change, and it happened to change at the same time that my personal life ended up getting better. And just from the way that I believe in God, I just felt like my life wasn't meant to better in front of. Uh, the masses like that, or mm-hmm. I would have been another one of these motherfuckers that everybody be posting a picture of talking about rest in peace to homie because mm-hmm. a lot of good people got killed just for jealousy and hate, just having a smile on their face. Some of these niggas got killed and didn't even get robbed. It's just motherfuckers hated they glow and hated what they had. Nigga, Nip was an example of that. Yeah. He, he was a shining light in that motherfucker, but he was too bright for the niggas around him. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, bright. not the niggas around, the environment then, around him. Especially at that situation. Right. Yeah, hell yeah. If that nigga store was in Santa Monica, I think he'd still be alive. Type shit. Because a lot of the environment couldn't get around that motherfucker. But he was in the environment, nigga, like, in it. When you get to that type of fucking, uh, you got to get out. You, I know you love motherfuckers like that, and you want to help. But him being an example, and a lot of people that are not as famous as him is an example, where people would tell a young basketball player like Magic Johnson, man, get out the hood. You would tell a young basketball player like Kobe Bryant, hey, man, don't be hanging around there when you're in Los Angeles. Like, these are, you know, motherfuckers who tell that, but he's the ultimate example of that. What about yourself? Open up businesses. Nigga, I believe in that. Do you, I like, do, do I you be, see yourself as be, I'm still around though because I, I ain't got it like that. But, but do you see yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, nigga. <laughs> ain't no cap though. But, like, that's true. But like, do you see yourself cashing <laughs> no in and going Respect. somewhere else though? Like, if you were to take it somewhere, like, would you go to Texas or would like just a yeah, random thing? I already thing, got you know a saying? place in Texas now, but 
it's just uh, financially and still my heart is still here or mm. whatever. I don't know enough people in Texas to want to be there every single day, but I do like the peace when I get there because nobody in Texas knows me. So I don't have nothing going on when I walk around there. The only people that know me know me from this mm -hmm. and it's all cool. So I love that the average person I'm gonna come across in Texas, nigga, they're not even finna even look back at me at all. And uh, life is way more affordable and cheaper there. Like, nigga, I'm better off in Texas. Yeah. Like as far as money wise, I ain't like, gonna lie I'm, to I'm you. Better off. And you solidified out here, so you go to Texas. Yeah, you gonna yeah. be cool. You, you but gonna be cool. I miss this shit though. Not being out in the midst of all the robbery and all that. Just my actual people that I love that I fuck with every day. But so you, that part I would still be visiting. But if it was the type of cash out that you talking about, hell yeah. But I probably wouldn't go that far. I just go a little bit away from this motherfucker. I wouldn't go there. I'd go to you got places here in California that will put you out the way of that kind of harm where you can wear your nice watch and you can actually go and eat. They got places here. Say that. Where these bums just it's just too much. Talk your shit. Them. They don't even the police will pull them over in the neighborhoods in these G thirty fives. As soon right. as they see them prowling their streets, they be like, this doesn't belong here. You got places like that in Cal in LA. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't sat down and learned so much over yeah, there. Yeah, like I said, we could go on for days. Days. Yeah, man, it was nice talking well, about like I'm, mad, no, I'm mad I didn't make the trip to Detroit with you because that would have been a real, with you and Tone. Yeah. Y'all did that, that shit. The that next time we do something like that, nigga, you can. Oh, man. my mama, because we need that. We had most, and then you would have felt another part of it that would have been like, because we trying to put those pieces together. You see what they doing on that YouTube. Like, nigga, you would have linked another piece of this puzzle together mm -hmm. all the way. I swear to God on my mama. And we're going to do it again. Y'all like, say y'all building that bridge as it is. You feel me? So, yeah, yeah that next time around, that'd yeah. be cool. We, we already just... talking about that shit. We already talking about that yeah, shit. Say, right you already know. Tell him, Eddie, you already know. You can tap yeah. me with this. Nigga, nigga all of them raffles, nigga, we hope that the cars go far because we want to go on a road trip. It's just niggas from the Bay keep winning. Well, of course, because that's the majority where the tickets are sold. Yeah. <laughs> he said, hey, no, that's true. No, nah, I feel yeah. you. That's true. But, that's a good demographic. Yeah, man, thanks for having me, man. We got to pull up to the shop. We didn't even get into the shop shit, so we'll damn near pull up over there and have a whole conversation about this, that shit. Shorter than later, though. Everything like that. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Everything, yeah, yeah. bro. We man, appreciate you. Thanks for having you. me, man. Nah, for real, for real. Like I said, we ain't, we ain't your city, bro. So we appreciate you for letting us be over here and you pulling up on That's us. Like, real. Oh, we just, we just yeah, checked man. in. You know what I'm saying? Today is the first day we just got here. So, <laughs> man. Man, if you been out on no bullshit. I ain't got no niggas trying to rob no. That's my nigga right there. You know, hey, see, man, if y'all made it this far, make sure shit. you follow, like, comment, subscribe, for real, bro. We appreciate you for tuning in, man. You already know what it is, man, for real. It's your boy, JG, y'all. It's Jay Jonah and this motherfucker signing out with... Yep, Snoop, man. Hell yeah. yeah. Hey, yep. hey about, uh, we about this motherfucker. It's blowing smoke. Yes, sir.